Happy New Year and welcome to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. Joining me today are attorney and author Daphne Barbie Wooten, retired professor and author Dr. Catherine Waddell Takara, an artist and former instructor of adult education, Kimberly Keys. Today, we're going to talk about Sisters Across Oceans, Hawaii to West Africa Poetry Exchange. Ladies, Happy New Year and welcome to Sister Power. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. This is a, you know, it's today is a different day. We know we're not going to talk about it, the one year anniversary of this, but today we have some good news. We have a happy poetry book that everyone must have. And we're going to speak with uh, Catherine Takara and tell us about the process of putting this book, Sisters Across Oceans, together. Well, I love poetry and my daughter has lived in Africa. And so she also is a poet and was interested in doing a, an exchange with African poets, men and women, and um, West Oakland poets. And she did that exchange successfully, keeping making it through technology, keeping in contact, using the Renshaw form, which is the last verse of one person's poem. And then we had a partner and they would use that last verse to create their own poem. So it was kind of like a call and respond, um, which was a great idea. But before we could do our project, because it seemed like I talked to Carla, daughter, about it. It seemed that it would be a great idea for the links to be involved in something like that, because we have a, a committee, or we call it a facet, called International Friends. And that seemed like a great way for us to make the international connection. And so Carla set it up where we would be with Ghanaian women. But before we could begin the project, I gave two writing workshops with several of the links, because some of them said, oh, I can't write. But of course, everyone can write. And so we had our two workshops, and some nice poetry came out of it. And then we were partnered up with an African counterpart, and we began our exchange of poetry, which ended after, I guess, about six or eight weeks of working together. And then we wanted to do a book. And of course, funding is always an issue. But we persisted anyway. I was going to publish it with my press, Pacific Raven Press, LLC. And um, the process began. It was a wonderful idea to um, ask Kimberly to uh, create um, the cover. And then we worked with a graphic artist who was able to take our concepts and her concept in particular and to make this incredible cover eye-catching, just perfect for a bookstore or for anyone. And then, um, of course, it was all the stages of editing and redoing, and you're dealing with people or working with people of another main language sometimes, and even our own languages vary. And so with my press, I'm particularly, um, I like excellence. And so it took a while to get us to that point where all of us were at our best. Oh, and good. And we created this book. Well, it was long, you. but it, yeah, it was thank you. Well, you mentioned um, Kimberly Keys, the artist, and I call it a happy book. It's so beautiful. Let's discuss thank the you. beautiful cover of Sisters Across Oceans. Thank you, Sharon. Um, this uh, cover is a collaboration um, of an interwoven fabric of generations. Beginning at the bottom is the young children of our generations to come. Uh, in the middle is the ladies who represent Hawaii. And then in the background is our ancestors and our sisters who represent Africa. And so it was just all interwoven into one fabric, uh, bringing it all together. Beautiful. This happy book is beautiful. And, and, and Daphne, coming to you, you, you posted a beautiful picture of all the authors. Mm -hmm. when you 
first you all first laid your eyes on this beautiful book. There's um, retired Judge Sandra Sims and Catherine, Kimberly, and Daphne. Tell us about that experience. Well, it was Kwanzaa, Day of Kwanzaa. And um, Kwanzaa is an African-American holiday which celebrates the first fruits. And so I'd like to think that Sisters Across Oceans is one of the first fruits. Um, so at any rate, it was perfect for Kwanzaa um, and the Kwanzaa present because we had just finished Christmas. And they, we met uh, Catherine Takara, uh, publisher and author. We met her at Windward Mall, and we took this impromptu photograph of four of the people. And mind you, we have about 18 people who have placed poetry in the book, but four of us were there, and um, we picked up our first fruits, uh, which was the Sisters Across the Ocean book. And um, it was a delight to look and to read and. And, and the book also has pictures of everyone who participated, a little bit about them, little short little biography. And um, I really like the meshing, the coming together of the different poems. For example, um, my partner was Appeal Corps and Appeal Corps is actually a, a very well-known um, Ghanaian poet and, and artist. And she actually spoke at the Sundance Festival. So the artists that were involved in this, especially from the Ghanaian side and the Hawaii side, of course, were um, very prominent, well-known artists. Um, and they've had their own public poetry published in books before, been on television before in Ghana. And so it was so much fun. And if I may, I'll be real quick, but um, one of the things um, I just want to share with the audience is, um, as Catherine Takara mentioned, it's Renshi meaning you take the last line of your partner's poem and you put it in your poem. So very briefly, I'll just tell you uh, what uh, my partner, Appeal Corps, did. Her last line in her poet, poem about a grandmother is, like the queen that you always were. So I used her line of poetry and picked it up in my short poem called For the Queens, like the queens, like we queens, like us queens that we are and always were. Celebrate, celebrate our destinies, goals, loves, likes, powers, ups and downs, and many spirals leading to a better world. Hail to the queens with peppermint breath, papaya kisses, mango smiles, we celebrate. Remember, we are loved by the queens in our lives. Nefertari, ya, uh, Asantawa, Nanny of the Maroons, Amatore of Kandaka, Beyonce, Makiba, Rihanna, Hatshepsut, Lily Okalani, Kamala Harris, um, and I'm going to add Stacey Abrams, although that's not in my poem. Okay. But, uh, queens, we celebrate our queens within us. Thank that you. That an example. Yeah, lovely. Absolutely lovely. Lovely for sure. Catherine, what is the value of this collaboration? Well, I love several things. I love to explore identity issues, and I love travel, and I love diversity, and have spent uh, four times in Africa, West Africa and South Africa, and that we share common issues, um, that we share the coloration of our various skins, that we share um, our struggle and resistance to oppression and colonialism and um, trying to be forced to be something that we are not and to take um, a good uh, strong back and eyes to the sky of our possibilities. Those were all factors that um, really and then the gender thing, of course, women, 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 strong women, uh, legacies of women. Those were things that um, were exciting to me and we explored together, uh, whether it was who was the mama or who am I or what are the forces around me, the circumstances, the conditions, how they change, how we can help them to change, those kinds of things. Uh this sounds like a love story. This sounds like a lot of love to me. Kimberly, how did this experience impact you the most? 
Um, it was a growing period for me, and I'm sure it was for all of us. From the very beginning of the basic questions, the very basic question of who am I? Um, I remember sitting in a cave at the beach, answering that question on a Zoom call, and it was such a wonderful spiritual experience for me to, to try to think of the basic elements of who I am, because I never really think like that. Um, and just the whole process was growth. And um, then meeting our sisters and sharing love and sharing our experiences. It was just a wonderful experience. The whole thing was a huge impact for me. It's a very positive experience. And I do want to say that after I left the ladies at the mall, I had to go across the store and I took the book and I opened it up and I began to weep. I just absolutely cried. I, I'm so glad I, I wasn't there to cry in front of everybody because I was so overwhelmed with emotion because I thought about my grandmother who also lived in Africa for a few years. And I looked at the poem that I wrote about her and I just thought, how proud that she would have been to know what we have done, you know, to, to bring all of this together. And it was a very big impact on me, on my life. And I wanna thank you all for allowing me to be a part of this. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Daphne. What was enjoyable about working on this book of poetry? I really enjoyed, um reading everybody's perspective um, and view and um, meeting um, different sisters um, in Africa, Pia Kaur, my partner, but not just her, but others. And listening to other poems with a, a back and forth, a call and response was really wonderful how they picked up. And I tried to think about what was the main theme in this wonderful book. And I think the main theme is women empowerment, um, paying homage to your mother, your grandmother, or great, great ancestors. I mean, there's even one poem in there um, from um, one of the Ghanaian sisters about uh, a woman who's enchained in the dungeons, slave dungeons in Ghana, but let, yet loving her daughter that she just had. Just the love that came out of it in this very hard reality poem. It was, but it's just beautiful, as Kimberly says, you just sit there and cry and, and you know, reading these poems. I mean, because it's, it's love and it's honoring um, our ancestors. Yeah, absolutely. I spoke to Kimberly afterwards and she told me how she cried, but I was so overjoyed myself because it's a beautiful, happy book. I said that before. And we have for our sister view, sister power audiences where you can purchase this book. We're going to show that I mean, everyone should have a happy book. And this is one of them. So let me ask you this, Catherine, why sisters? Well, I think there is a natural kinship with the diaspora, African um, women. But in addition to that, the Lynx organization of which we are all a part of, um, one of our themes is not only sisterhood, but service. And I think that that idea of standing tall and in honor, not only of those humans, but in honor of spirit, is very, very um, impactful on each of us as we move through getting to know each other and offering, in this case, its words and connection as our service. I mean, it could be feeding other people. It could be many different things. But right now, um, and it could be anything that we do in our professions, but collectively, we have done something I think quite different and quite um, moving and enlightening even. Yeah. So Kimberly, will there be upcoming projects? I certainly hope so. <laughs> um, I'm hoping that we can continue with this uh, with our links, uh, Hawaii links and ladies in Africa. Uh, and if we do, I'm so looking forward to it um, to continue to Grow. This is an ongoing process, and I would love to continue to be a part of it. Oh, good. Daphne, 
what did you learn from from you know the women and writing and collaborating with these sisters well, i learned that kimberly is a wonderful artist <laughs> although i had heard and i always knew that but she did a really wonderful job on the cover yeah. but i also learned um that no matter where you are in the world that there are similar themes in our lives that we honor and respect and that was so pleasant to to me to see that no matter where you are in this world um you can still reach across the waters for, um with the words and communicate and share stories it's oh, lovely yeah yeah it's just it's beautiful and Catherine, why poetry with partners well you get to know another person you get to know different ways of envisioning or seeing and experiencing the world, particularly if it's an international connectivity. I would like to say for the title, in terms of how we put this book together, there were several ideas. And Daphne, being very active in the whole production, besides me and Carla, on a regular daily or almost daily basis, she was very instrumental in um, steering us to this compact yet um, very meaningful title, Sisters Across Oceans, plural, because we're across two oceans, not just one, but two. And so it's, it's almost like a little miracle that we're doing it. And I'll, I'll just say quickly that um, there seems to be enough interest, and I've talked to my daughter about it, that we can perhaps do another collaboration starting in the springtime and um, this time with women either from Nigeria or Kenya. That is the plan. So we'll see That's how it good. develops. We're going to have more workshops. That is good news. That's good news. Daphne, what do you hope others who read this beautiful, happy book will take away from the poetry? Well, it's interesting that you'd ask that because I, I have been I hadn't been soliciting feedback, but I have gotten a lot of feedback from mainly my friends. <laughs> and, um, you know, they, they say, oh, you know, um, I noticed that um, somebody from, a, well, a person, a woman, a good friend of hers was from Ethiopia, and she would always call on her mother when she, her mother is deceased, but she'd always call on her, say, well, if my mother was here, this is what she would do. And so I, she, when she read my book, she said, oh, this makes really good sense. It makes sense that you call on your mother and your ancestors to protect you for protection. Um, and so it made her realize different cultural um, ways of coping, if you will. And, um, and, and she got an appreciation from that. So um, I think the people that have read it, uh, one woman was upset with me. <laughs> she was a good friend of mine. But she was saying, how can you write about queens? That's so classist. You need to you know, write about other people besides queens. And then when she read the book, she wrote me a wonderful email. Oh my goodness, this is such empowerment, women empowerment. Let's have more of this. Um, so you see, uh, it gives you a different perspective. I mean, I, I saw where she was coming from, but once she read the book, she loved it. You know, because it wasn't just for queens, it was for everybody. And actually, all of us are queens, right? Or kings too. <laughs> Rulers. <laughs> what do we uh, rule the world? We rule the world. <laughs> women rule the world, absolutely. And I, I want to come back to you, Kimberly. You know, you're an artist and you've done so many beautiful paintings. I have, I'm sure, half a dozen here. <laughs> Thank half you. A dozen of them here. So just take us back to you're looking at a blank canvas. How did you draw from the poem to put it on paper? Well, I have to say I was caught at a very good time. Um, at the time that I was asked to do the book cover, I was experimenting with just using pure color um, and not anything too muted. And so when they when they came up with the idea for the book cover, I wanted to first of all make sure that it was very colorful, very vivid, and very simple. 
uh, not simple shapes, not, not anything, um, a, you know, exaggerated with shadows or anything, uh, more like what I call folk art. And um, I just, uh, with, you know, with just ideas, you know, Catherine gave me ideas and Daphne looked over different work that I did. And we just kind of collaborated and came up with, you know, some ideas of, you know, what would look best. And that's what happened. But I, I must say, though, I have a sketchbook that's got a million sketches of what was going to be on this cover. And I still save them. But I have, I have tons, tons of different ideas. So it took a while to come up with the, with the last uh, final project. Wow. You know, I'm going to read something very quickly, Catherine. I want you to explain this to me in sisters or to the audience in sisters across oceans these poets affirm self-determination empower the will to survive fight back change inspire conscious evoke consciousness and offer courage offer us some courage here more courage <laughs> I think that we are channels of invisible energies that we can open to that are powerful. And if we are still and listen and then allow that energy to come forward in whatever, however we, we individually express ourselves, it brings forth, it calls forth the courage to go beyond the ordinary, to go beyond fear and inertia maybe, or um, just being mechanical. Hi, how are you? Fine, how are you? You know, I mean, we tend to be very mechanical in how we live and a project like this and poetry in particular um, calls attention to and brings the intention to being open and the arrow goes both ways, you know, it's, it's like you're being open to each other or to higher forces or whatever, but at the same time you're giving forth. So it's almost cyclical, but it's also spiraling up to create something very, um, very fine, a very fine energy. And I'm so proud that we could do this. I mean, there's one poem in there about um, George Floyd, and it's a it's a it's a very powerful poem. But the thing about it is, and she mentions, yeah, you know, and we all know he was calling his mama, you know, and that goes back to some of our earlier comments that that there is this connection, visible and invisible, that we can tap into. Ah, uh, I love it. And once again. You know, view Sister Power viewers, you can purchase this book on Amazon, uh, Barnes and Noble, bookshop.org, and there's a list there for you. And we're going to show the website page. But Daphne, I want to ask you, who else was involved? Oh, we're talking about 18 people, and I'm going to read them to you right now. Willie Binnerman, um, Apia Kor Saram Ashang Api. Um, Catherine Takara, of course, Paula Major, um, Marquisha Arabe Taylor Darko, and we have um, Catherine Takara, of course, and Patricia Rejoice Akusua Benuyena. And mind you, when you get this book, you can read all about these, these wonderful women who participated. Um, we have Regina Cook, and she was paired up with Brittany Tachi. We have Ava Beeman who did the George Floyd poem. We have Celestine Nudano, um, who was paired up with Shauna Sherman, and Shauna Sherman was from California. And we had um, Wudem Afua Parko, and she was paired up with Allison Francis, who uh, is a professor at Chaminade. We had um, Kim Keys, of course, with Crystal Terry. We have... Um, Sandra Sims with Amua Fua'a Sefua Cecilia. 
wonderful poems. So there was a whole bunch of different perspectives um, and call and, call and response to each perspective, like a pen pal, but more than a pen pal, because it's actually creative and, and, and responding to a poem written and then writing a poem in response. Yeah. Kimberly. Yes. Tell us what you, what was your takeaway from this book? I do want to mention, am I, I do want to mention um, on the book cover, in the center, in yellow on top, that inspiration came from my mother for her arms to raise up. Um, and it's actually from an image where she was raising her arms up in such joy and she was in a garden. And also the two images on the top was my daughter and her friend, and they were actually dancing in such joy um, on the beach. And so I wanted these flowing movements to be on the top um, to represent um, our African sisters. Love it. What was your takeaway, Catherine, very quickly before we close? Tell us your takeaway from, did you, how many books do you have out now? Of my own, I have nine, and I'm just about to have a haiku collection, so that'll be 10. But we have been publishing other people. In fact, during COVID, I think there have been four books in the past two years that we have, a small press, been able to do. I've been working really hard and, of course, being stuck at home. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but what is my takeaway? What was yeah. the question exactly? Your takeaway from writing the poetry uh, very quickly, in 30 seconds. Well, I did, I did write a long poem about my mom, which created a, which made me go back in my memory bank. But I think that what was most exciting and um, hopeful for me, encouraging for me, was that here we were, what, nine, 18 women who actually, we work with only our partner, but beyond our partner. It's like, it's like, uh, uh, like we were merry-go-round, you know, skipping along. I mean, it, it was such a positive joining uh, experience, I think, and, and, and conjuring up the emotion and the intellect and the spirit and all of those things, each of us in our own way. Well, okay, Queens, we are out of time. And we'll have to wrap it up. I'm Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. This is Sister Power. We've been talking with Daphne Barbie Wooten, Catherine Waddell Takara, and Kimberly Keys. Thanks to all for being here. And thanks to you, our listeners, for listening. I will see you next Thursday, January the 20th, for more Sister Power on Think Tech, and I want everyone to get this book. I'm Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. Aloha. Aloha.